Yugi vs Raphael is a fan favourite duel in the Yu-Gi-Oh series. However, at the same time, it's also one of the most controversial, as it's the only time in the entire series where Yugi loses a duel to someone legitimately, without any outside interference, or it being Yugi himself. <laughs> Yugi actually lost! Now my lawyers have told me to point out that this duel and this entire season are technically not canon. As this season is an anime original storyline, or filler as some would call it. Now because of this, some people dismiss this duel, saying it isn't part of the canonical story, so this duel technically doesn't count. However, my argument to that is, the Waking the Dragons arc is awesome, so I think it's fine. Raphael's ideology is that everybody has equal amounts of darkness to light within them. He relates it to a pendulum. Humanity has a potential to do great things, but at the same time it is just as likely to do the complete opposite, and do something dark and heinous when the chips are down. What Raphael wants is for Yugi to admit that even him, as good as he is, has the potential, like everybody else, to become evil. However, Yugi rejects this concept and vows to defeat Raphael to disprove his ideals. However, as we will find out in the duel, when Yugi is backed into a corner, he will embrace the darkness and basically confirm Raphael's ideals. And what this all centers around is the seal of Orichalcos, a card that grants its user great power but at the risk of stealing someone's soul. For today, I want to find out two things. One, could Yugi have won this duel without the need to activate the Seal of Orichalcos? And two, worst case scenario, if he does activate the Seal of Orichalcos, could he get a win with it on the field? I'm excited to find this out, and I hope you are too, because we're going to jump into the duel. Let's go. The duel begins and Raphael goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of Guardian Treasure, Rescuer from the Grave and four mysterious cards that are never actually revealed. But that's fine though, because Raphael immediately plays his Guardian Treasure, which at the cost of five cards in his hand allows him to draw two new cards and then, for as long as it remains on the field, during each draw phase, he can now draw two cards instead of one. Raphael draws his two cards and receives Backup Gardener and Purity of the Cemetery. He sets both and ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, Berthamet, Polymerization, Necromancy, Pump Up, and a mysterious monster that differs between the sub and the dub. In the dub, it's Obnoxious Celtic Guardian, while in the sub, it appears to be a high-level normal monster. If we had to guess, probably Curse of Dragon. Logically, Curse of Dragon makes more sense because Yugi would never have been able to summon it, that's why it never saw play, whereas Obnoxious Celtic Guardian could have been beneficial to Yugi, so it seems like this might have been a dub error. So from now on, I'll refer to this as Curse of Dragon. Yugi starts by immediately activating Polymerization to fuse his Gazelle and Berthamet together to make Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast. He moves straight into his battle phase and attacks Raphael's face down monster. Yugi does what we like to call a red flag in the Yu-Gi-Oh industry, where if someone explains what they're about to do, then something completely different is going to happen. I'm sure your defensive monster won't stand a chance against Chimera! Shuck, Backup Gardener has more defense than Chimera. So, Yugi takes 100 damage, and Backup Gardener is not destroyed. Yugi ends his turn here. It's Raphael's turn, and he draws two cards due to the effect of Guardian Treasure. He gets Guardian Axe Graal and Guardian Graal. Get used to Raphael getting the perfect draw-pair combo. He's going to do this a lot throughout this duel, so yeah. Raphael activates Gravity Axe Graal, equipping it to Backup Gardener, which increases its attack by 500, but also makes it so that all of Yugi's monsters cannot change their battle positions. However, this card doesn't stay equipped to Backup Gardener for long, since Raphael is now able to special summon Guardian Graal from his hand, as Gravity Axe Graal is on the field. He does this and then uses the effect of Backup Gardener to move the equipped spell from it to Guardian Graal, increasing its attack to 3000. Graal then attacks and destroys Yugi's Chimera. Now, since Chimera was destroyed, Yugi is able to special summon Berthamet back from his grave. Raphael ends his turn. It's back to Yugi and he draws 5 star Twilight. He activates it by tributing Berthamet, allowing him to summon 5 specific Karibos from his deck to the field. These are... Karibo, Kariba, Karibi, Karibe, and Karibu. 
I love that these are all real cards now in the real world. That's so awesome. Keep in mind, for the rest of this duel, these monsters can't be tributed for a tribute summon. Now let's familiarize ourselves with what these monsters can do. Karibo can be discarded from the hand to take no damage from an attack. And also in the anime, whilst it's on the field, when it's targeted for an attack, you can negate it, then destroy Karibo and take damage equal to its attack. Kuriba can remove from play itself and Kuribet be Bo and Boo to special summon Kuri Babylon from your hand, deck or grave. Kuri B, when a face up Kuri you control is selected for an attack, you can negate the attack. Kuri Be, you can remove from play this card and Kuri Bat be Bo and Boo to special summon Kuri Bandit from your hand or deck. Kuri Boo, you can discard one trap card to select one monster your opponent controls. That monster loses 1500 attack until the end phase. I want you to keep in mind that Curry Bet can summon Curry Bandit because Curry Bandit's ability is you're allowed to draw five cards from the top of your deck and then send all the monsters that you drew to the grave, but you get to keep everything else basically. That's a really good ability and he does use this card in the rematch duel but never in this duel. So while you're watching this duel and you ever see Curry Bet on the field, no, he could do this at any point but he's not going to. Anyway, getting back to the duel, Yugi uses the effect of Curry Ba to remove all of them from play to summon Curry Babylon, whose attack is the combined attack of all the Karibos that we used for its summon. However, Yugi then plays Pump Up, which lets him double the attack of Curry Babylon. He goes into his battle phase and attacks Guardian Graal, with the intention of both to be destroyed. However, the attack fails as Raphael uses the ability of Rescuer from the Grave that he had sent to the Grave during his first turn. Yugi's reaction to this is priceless. You can't play a card from your graveyard! I just did! However, Yugi reveals his Curry Babylon's effect, which is if its attack is negated, it can remove itself from play to resummon the five Karibo brothers back to the field. This seems like a shame to get rid of a good monster, however its attack was going to go down next turn, plus with all the Karibos on the field, you've basically created an almost indestructible wall. And it's worth mentioning something brought up earlier, he could have summoned Curry Bandit here, however he would be taking a risk, because while drawing five cards and then sending all the monsters to the grave is good, it's a gamble and he might not get any monsters to defend himself with, and if he takes these direct attacks, most likely he'll lose the duel. So. Yugi ends his turn. It's back to Raphael and he draws twice, getting exchange and self-tribute. He sets both face down. Why he set exchange? I'm not too sure since it's crucial for his end game and seems kind of risky to put it on the field, but it's no big deal. Raphael activates his face down Purity of the Cemetery. Since he has no monsters in his grave, every time Yugi's standby phase occurs, he will take 100 damage for each monster in his grave. However, if Raphael at any point has a monster in his grave, the card is destroyed. Raphael attacks with Guardian Graal, targeting Karibo, but Yugi activates Karibi's effect to negate the attack at no cost. Raphael ends his turn. It's back to Yugi and he draws Pot of Greed. The standby phase occurs and Yugi takes 300 damage from Purity of the Cemetery. This is because he has three monsters, Gazelle, Berthamet and Chimera. Yugi plays Pot of Greed, but not before letting everyone know what it does. Pot of Greed lets me draw two cards from my deck. He draws Dark Magician Girl and the Eye of Tamias. He activates Karibar's effect again to banish the Karibo brothers to special summon Kuri Babylon back from the Banish Zone. Note! This might be an illegal play because nowhere does it state you can special summon it from the banish zone, only from the hand, deck or graveyard and it was definitely banished. However, if he has a second copy of Curry Babylon in his deck, then I guess this is fine. Regardless, with Curry Babylon on the field now, he tributes it to summon Dark Magician Girl. Because remember, the Karibo brothers couldn't be sacrificed due to their effects. Now, Yugi plays his Eye of Tamias card, which merges with Dark Magician Girl to become Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight. Note, the original Dark Magician Girl doesn't go to the grave. Instead, it's been transformed into a new card. As you can see later on, this monster is still on the field, so Tamias basically warps the card rather than send it to the grave and put a new card on the field. Keep that in mind. Now, with his new monster, Yugi attacks Guardian Graal with Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight. But wait a minute! Guardian Graal has more attack than Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight. 
What's Yugi thinking? He reveals his monster's effect, which is that when it attacks a monster, Yugi can discard a card to immediately destroy the opponent's monster without applying any damage. Yugi does this and discards Obnoxious Celtic Guard in the dub or Curse of Dragon in the sub. However, Raphael uses his face down spell Self Tribute to pay 1000 life points to prevent Guardian Graal from being destroyed. And you gotta love that JoJo face. Yugi is forced to end his turn here. It's back to Raphael and he draws twice, gaining the Seal of Orichalcos and Crystal Seal. He sets Crystal Seal face down and plays his set exchange. Both players swap the only card that they have in their hands. Raphael receives Necromancy and Yugi receives the Seal of Orichalcos. Since Graal can't attack into Dark Magician Girl without being destroyed, Raphael ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Big Shield Gardener. The standby phase occurs and now since Yugi has 5 monsters in the grave, he takes 500 damage. Yugi jumps into his battle phase and attacks with Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight, however Raphael activates Crystal Seal in response. This makes it so that Dark Magician Girl cannot attack be tributed, change its battle position, activate its effects, or even be selected as an attack target. Also, Crystal Seal can't be destroyed by other card effects. However, if the attack of the chosen monster changes, then the card is destroyed. Oh, and if your opponent only controls that monster, then you can attack around it basically directly. That does a lot of stuff, that card. This is a big hit to Yugi. And reluctantly, with no more plays left, he ends his turn by setting Big Shield Gardener face down. Raphael draws two cards, which are Rod of Silence KS'd and Guardian KS'd. He activates Rod of Silence, equipping it to back up Gardener, increasing its defense by 500. Now, since Rod of Silence is on the field, Raphael is allowed to normal summon Guardian KS'd, whose effect makes it unable to be targeted for attacks. However, if it's the only card on the field, the opponent can attack directly. Raphael enters his battle phase, attacking first with Guardian Graal. Big Shield Gardener is destroyed, and now, since Yugi controls no other monsters, Guardian Kaiest attacks directly. The attack is successful, and Yugi's life points are reduced to a mere 1200. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Card of Sanctity. The standby phase occurs, and Purity of the Cemetery deals 600 damage, since there are now 6 monsters in the grave. Yugi plays Card of Sanctity, which allows himself and Raphael to both draw until they have 6 cards. We see Yugi's hand consists of Hand Control, Dark Magician, Sangan, Magical Hats, Defusion, and the Seal of Orichalcos. Why am I showing the Japanese hand? Well, that's because the dub got his hand wrong. This is an animation error. Raphael's hand consists of Wicked Breaking Flameberg Bow, Kushido Spirit, Aid to the Doomed, Rod of the Mind's Eye, Monster Rebirth, and Necromancy. Now this is a very big moment. Yugi looks at his hand and realises that nothing can keep him in the duel, as no matter what he does, during the next standby phase, he will take 600 damage and lose the duel. Now the correct answer here is for Yugi to just admit defeat, surrender, saying well done Raphael, you won, you beat me in this duel, and also I guess your philosophy is kind of right, I kind of considered using the Seal of Arikalkos, and then just ripped the Seal of Arikalkos up in front of him, and they both just stand there awkwardly until everybody else comes comes and they can get out of there. And the reason that's the correct answer is because there are no stakes involved in this duel. Even if you lost this card game, nothing would change at all. Wait, what's that now? I could lose? No one's gonna die from this duel. No one's kidnapped. <laughs> nothing can go wrong unless someone plays that field spell. Now I activate the seal of Orichalcos! Now, little Yugi is locked behind the seal unable to influence the pharaoh's decisions. All of Yugi's monsters gain 500 attack, Yugi's spell and trap zones can now be used as monster zones, and monsters in those zones can't be targeted for attack when there is a monster in front of them. Oh, and of course, the loser of this duel now loses their soul. Yugi, in a drunken haze, professes that with this power, he could easily get 10 monsters to the field this very turn. Since Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight's attack was increased, Crystal Seal is destroyed. However, because the legendary dragons cannot coexist with the Seal of Tamias, Tamias abandons Yugi in the duel. Yugi goes on the offensive. He activates Hand Control, which lets him guess a spell card in his opponent's hand, and if it's right, they are forced to use it. 
Since Yugi gave Raphael necromancy, he declares that, and Raphael is forced to use it. Its effect makes it so Yugi has to summon four random monsters from his grave to the field in defense. However, when any are destroyed, all monsters on Yugi's field lose 600 attack. The four randomly chosen monsters are Big Shield Gardener, Berthamet, Gazelle the King of Mythical Beasts, and Kuri Babylon. Yugi then tributes Gazelle and Berthamet to summon Dark Magician. Now with a space, he moves Dark Magician Girl back into the spell and trap zone. With five open monster zones, Yugi activates Kuri Babylon's effect to remove itself from play to special summon the five Karibo brothers back to the field. Kuribar's effect kicks in, banishing all of them again to resummon Curry Babylon. However, this time it has 4,500 attack since each Karibo was boosted by the seal. Yugi enters his battle phase and uses Curry Babylon to attack and destroy Guardian Graal. And now, since there is a monster in his grave, Purity of the Cemetery is destroyed. Yugi attacks next with Dark Magician, targeting Backup Gardener. However, Raphael activates the effect of Aid of the Doomed from his hand, which, when one of his monsters are destroyed, lets him discard two cards to end the battle phase. He discards Kishido's spirit and the wicked breaking Flameberg bow. Now, since none of Yugi's other monsters can get over backup Gardener, Yugi has to end his turn here. The question now becomes, could Yugi have actually won this turn? This time, Yugi sets the seal of Orichalcos face down before he activates Card of Sanctity. Why? Because with one less card in his hand, when he uses Card of Sanctity this time, he gets to draw six cards instead of five. And what would that sixth card have been? Catapult Turtle. Let's see how his turn would play out. Yugi plays hand control and declares necromancy. Raphael summons the four random monsters from Yugi's grave. This time he sacrifices Big Shield Gardener to summon Catapult Turtle. He uses Catapult Turtle's effect, which remember is not a once per turn and that's why it was broken in the real world for a while. He tributes Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, to deal 750 damage, then Berthamet for another 700. However then, because Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight, is sealed, and Curry Babylon has no attack points, since it wasn't summoned through the Karibo Brothers, all that Yugi would have left to sacrifice is Catapult Turtle itself, leaving Raphael with 1,050 life points. And unfortunately, with no more plays left, and only Sangan, Dark Magician, and Defusion in hand, Yugi would lose the duel. So what does this confirm? Well, no matter what Yugi would have done this turn, he could not have won the duel on his own. But what happens if he did the exact same play, but also used the seal? To make a long story short, now that everything is boosted, when Catapult Turtle tributes Gazelle and Berthamet, this time he'll do 1950 damage for both of them. And now, since Dark Magician Girl is freed from the crystal, she can be sacrificed, dealing 1,250 damage, and this would win Yugi the duel, and Raphael's soul would be sealed, and Yugi wouldn't learn any lessons. Now with this, there's two things to consider. The original way that Yugi was trying to win this turn by attacking, that made sense. He would have won by attacking, but Raphael had a hand trap card, which Yugi would have had no way of knowing about. So to summarize, if Yugi would have set the seal of Arikalkos before playing Card of Sanctity, he would have got Catapult Turtle, and he would now have had two options for victory, either by attacking with his high powered monsters or sacrificing everything through Catapult Turtle's ability. There was no way of Yugi knowing which one was the correct one, and unfortunately, the one he chose was the wrong one. In this hypothetical, of course, he didn't set the seal in the actual duel, so technically he did misplay. And of course, the second big thing is it requires Yugi to set the seal of Orikalko space down, which isn't a problem. It's a completely legal move to make in Yu-Gi-Oh, but in the anime, has anybody ever set a field spell card face down? Well, yes, actually, someone has. You see, Mako Tsunami set his Yumi field spell face down during Battle City, which should confirm that Yugi could have done this. However, when Mako Tsunami set his field spell, he set it in the spell and trap zones, and then when he activated it, he put it in his field zone. So it's a bit of a mess. By the way, thank you, Justin Pei, for pointing this out. So to summarize, Yugi could have won but not without activating the Seal of Orichalcos. With that hypothetical out of the way, let's get back to reality and see how the rest of this duel actually plays out. It's Raphael's turn and he draws Swords of Revealing Light and Limit Tribute. He activates Monster Rebirth to put Guardian Graal back into his deck. Then he sets Limit Tribute face down and activates Swords of Revealing Light to stop Yugi from attacking for three turns. Raphael ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn and he draws 
Catapult Turtle. With no way to attack Raphael, he sacrifices Big Shield Garner to summon Catapult Turtle. Yugi attempts to use its effect, but Raphael plays his face down trap, Limit Tribute. Now, while this card is face up, both players can only tribute one monster per turn. This prevents Yugi from using Catapult Turtle's effect. Yugi ends his turn. Raphael does seem to have a lot of very specific counter cards that work perfectly in the situations that Yugi's in at the moment, but that's Yu-Gi-Oh, isn't it? Ignore me. It's back to Raphael, and he draws Morale Boost and Nightmare Binding. He uses Nightmare Binding on Kuri Babylon, which reduces its attack by 800, and then increases his life points by 800. Also, Kuri Babylon can't use any of its effects, nor be tributed. Raphael ends his turn here. It's back to Yugi, and he draws Beast of Gilfa. Still unable to attack, he activates Catapult Turtle's effect. He chooses his Dark Magician for the tribute. The effect is successful, and 1500 damage is dealt directly to Raphael. And now, since Dark Magician is in the grave, Dark Magician Girl's attack increases by 300. Yugi ends his turn. Raphael draws Shrink, and a card that is never revealed, or used. He sets Shrink face down, and since he has no more moves left, he ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn, and he too draws a card that is never revealed. He activates Catapult Turtle's effect again, this time choosing Dark Magician Girl as a tribute. Dark Magician Girl gives a sad glance at Yugi before being fired. If this move is successful, Yugi wins the duel. However, Raphael activates his Shrink spell to harbor attack, making it so that Raphael survives by a mere 100 life points. Technically, you can't use Shrink like this. You can't halve the monster's attack on the way as it's coming over, and you can't activate Shrink in response to the tribute of the Dark Magician Girl, so... This is technically an illegal move, but it's in the anime, so we'll allow it. Yugi ends his turn, and as he does, Swords of Revealing Light disappears, meaning Yugi can go all out on his next turn. However, unfortunately for Yugi, there will be no next turn. Raphael's turn, and the final turn of the duel. He draws two cards, which are Celestial Sword Iatos and Guardian Iatos. Raphael activates Celestial Sword, equipping it to backup Gardner to increase its attack by 300. However, more importantly, now that Celestial Sword is on the field and there are no monsters in Raphael's graveyard, he is able to special summon his ultimate monster, Guardian Iatos. He uses Backup Gardener's effect to move Celestial Sword onto her. Now, with all the pieces in place, Raphael activates Iatos' effect. He can banish monster cards from the top of Yugi's grave downward until a non-monster card is revealed. Then, Iatos gains attack equal to the combined attack of all those monsters. In reverse order, the monsters in Yugi's grave are Dark Magician Girl, Dark Magician, Big Shield Gardener, Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, and Berfamet. Each is absorbed into the blade of Iatos, but not before giving a disgusted look at what Yugi has become. Iatos' attack is boosted up to 10,000, and with that power, it attacks and destroys Yugi's Curry Babylon, winning Raphael the duel. The seal then takes its prize, ripping the soul of Yugi from his body, and sending it off to the Great Leviathan. It's all my fault, Yugi! Come back! What have we learned? Well, we've learned that there was a point in this duel where Yugi realized he couldn't have won. So what he should have done right there, right then, was scoop. Say, Raphael, you've got me. I don't want to turn this duel into something more than it actually is. Your ideals, I guess they're kind of right. I guess people do have the potential to do bad things and stuff. Like, you probably have the potential to do good things as well. I've seen your backstory. It's very sad and tragic, so... I see where you're coming from. You win, Raphael. I surrender. And then be like, oh, by the way, the seal. <laughs> tear that up. Throw it on the floor. Raphael can tear up Yugi's necromancy to get back at him. And then they can just awkwardly stand there until the helicopter comes or Yugi's friends come and they can figure out a way how to sort that out after that. That was the correct answer. However, out of a sense of pride or just a refusal to admit defeat, he did choose to play the seal. And unfortunately, as we now know, there was no way for him to win without the seal. However, there was a potential way for him to win with the seal. And due to a minor misplay of not setting the seal of Arikalko's face down, unfortunately, he missed out on that potential win. Of course, if he had won by playing the seal, then he wouldn't have learned a lesson and it would have been kind of dark. But it might have been an interesting storyline, I guess. Yuki could have maybe took the seal of Arikalko's after he won, and that could have been his trump card to fight against Doma. He could be playing his own Seal of Orichalcos to beat the Seal of Orichalcos people at their own game. I don't know. 
interesting alternate universe, I guess. But regardless, with that, that was a look at Raphael versus Yugi. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see Raphael versus Yugi's second duel, I guess we could do that in the future. But if there's any other duels you want me to cover, let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Catch you later.